Welcome to this webinar on modelling natural ventilation systems in Design Builder. I'm Dave Cocking and the main presenter today will be Renjith Jayapalan Nair. After this short introduction, Renjith will introduce you to a range of natural ventilation modelling techniques in Design Builder's Energy Plus interface, reinforcing key points from our natural ventilation tutorials and related webinars. You can see the wide range of functionality available in Design Builder on this screen. There is other simulation software available that enables you to model buildings and HVAC systems in detail. And there's other software that enables you to model buildings and HVAC systems quickly, but they're separate tools. This is where Design Builder is different to the other mainstream simulation software. It has the ability to model buildings and their systems from early through detailed modeling stages more easily, quickly and productively. Renjith will demonstrate that today by showing how natural ventilation can be assessed quickly during early design, but then seamlessly progressed into more detailed design and modeling without having to use another model or start again in different software. Design Builders is widely regarded as the best of all mainstream tools for modeling geometry. That's important given the amount of time most modelers have to spend on geometry creation. Whilst it is quick and easy to create and edit geometry in Design Builder, we don't have time to cover that today, so Renjith will start with a pre-built model. If you're joining us for the first time, you can find short introductions to the software and its various capabilities, including geometry creation, in our free online tutorials. Renjith will show you where you can find the tutorials and additional learning resources and information during his presentation. Okay, introduction complete. I'll now hand you over to Ranjith. Thanks, Reed, and welcome everyone. So, natural ventilation systems. Natural ventilation systems introduce outdoor air via openings in the building fabric, which can be controlled according to the temperature set points and operating schedules in the simulation. We recently released a new series of tutorials on natural ventilation modeling. And in this webinar, we will be discussing the key points covered in those tutorials. This webinar is divided into four parts. In the first part, we will show you how to set up an early stage model to assess the cooling potential from natural ventilation. We will then move on to part two, where we will show you how you can easily progress from an early stage to a detailed stage model and assess the actual cooling impact using wind and void and sea pressure driven natural ventilation modeling. One of Design Builder's greatest strength is its fully integrated approach, meaning that you can set up a single model and run a number of analysis from it. In the third part, we will show you how you can import airflow rates from energy plus simulations to define boundary conditions for CFD analysis. In the final part, we will show you how you can model mixed mode ventilation systems in Design Builder, which allows you to test various ventilation strategies to optimize natural ventilation and heating or cooling loads. We will also show you where to find further free resources and guidance on related topics such as uh, CIPC TM52 and TM59 summer overheating assessments in naturally ventilated buildings. So moving on to Design Builder. For this webinar, we will be using this model. Here we have a two-story student accommodation. Each floor has four on flats labeled one to four, and the ground floor has a kitchen 
and the circulation area and the first floor uh, as a common room in place of kitchen. The roof is unoccupied and as you can see here, we have an adjacent building providing shading and reflection. There are two general approaches to natural ventilation and infiltration modeling in design builder. Depending on the option you select here in the model options under natural ventilation and infiltration header. Schedule is the default option. Here we set the airflow in air changes per hour and set a schedule to adjust that. It is very useful for early state sizing of natural ventilation systems and also looking at efficiencies of NADPRINT cooling. When calculated option is selected, you can define the openings, controls, and weather details, and Energy Plus calculates the airflow. The simulations use data including wind and buoyancy driven pressures, opening sizes and operation, and fabric infiltration details. It is often used to simulate buildings with features designed to increase natural ventilation rates, such as atria, and for some overheating calculations in naturally ventilated buildings. The default scheduled option, as mentioned, is generally used for early stage modeling and is the fastest and easiest method to set up and run. The infiltration rates can be specified using one of four different units consistent with local certification requirements or schemes like Passive House. You must ensure that you select the correct option for your particular purpose. For this webinar, I will leave it to add changes per hour. As you might imagine, aspects of a building design that can impact natural ventilation are spread across several areas of a model and its data inputs, bringing into play HVAC activity and construction tabs when using scheduled natural ventilation. I will now go through the steps required in each area of the model to set up a scheduled natural ventilation simulation. First, you must ensure that uh, the site location and the weather file are correct. I will leave it to London Gatwick Airport. Now, going to the HVAC tab, the option here allows you to include natural ventilation in your model. You can consider this checkbox like a main on off switch for natural ventilation system. So if you can't see a natural ventilation in input you expect to see, check that the natural ventilation is switched on here. Design Builder provides you with a number of templates which you can select from here. And for this webinar, I will select radiator heating with boiler, uh, hot waters, and natural ventilation system. And once the template is loaded, you can see that mechanical ventilation and cooling have been switched off. And at the bottom here, you can see that the natural ventilation has been switched on. Scheduled natural ventilation rates are predefined using a maximum air change rate. You can specify the method used to define that here. I will set it to by zone. And here you can uh, specify the peak ventilation rate. The operation schedule here is used to modify this maximum ventilation rate. For example, here for the operation schedule, we have the university bed occupancy schedule loaded. And not that our building is a student accommodation that is mainly occupied during the night time. And here, as you can see in the info panel, between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., the value is 0 0.25. And so the maximum ventilation rate will be reduced to 1.25 air changes. Note that you can switch between SI and IP units in the program options. Now, moving on to the activity tab. Here you can control the operation of natural ventilation based on indoor temperature set points by defining the options here. 
In the ventilation set point temperatures header, I'll change the natural ventilation minimum set point to 23 degrees Celsius. Therefore, natural ventilation will be switched on only when the indoor temperature is above 23 degrees Celsius. You can also set a maximum temperature control here if required. I will leave the heating set point to 20 degrees Celsius. This should provide sufficient red band to prevent simultaneous heating and cooling from venting. Going to the construction step, under the air tightness header, you can see that the infiltration rate has a, uh, is set to a fixed value of 0 0.7 air changes per hour. The infiltration rate should be appropriate for the building age and type. This value can be set by you, and you can also switch off the infiltration entirely, but that should only be done with great caution as it can have a big impact on the results for anything other than very airtight buildings. Here, I will assume that uh, this is a new build and will set the value to 0 0.4 air changes per hour. When using scheduled option, natural ventilation rates are predefined using maximum air change rate. And so I'm not going to make any relevant changes in the opening step. So having assigned all the necessary data inputs, I can now proceed to run a simulation. Before that, if I go to site level and then the simulation tab, this enables me to uh, view the weather data for the site. Here on the top graph, you can see the outside dry bulb temperature and the outside dew point temperature. Now, the data you can see here uh, is, a daily, uh, is in daily intervals. So I can change the interval here if I record, and I'll change it to hourly. At the bottom, you have the solar radiation graph. and you will notice that we have high direct uh, normal solar represented by these uh, yellow lines here during the end of May. So I will choose this as a simulation period to assess the potential of natural ventilation in our model. So I'll go to building level and run a simulation. I will give it a relevant name. and change the simulation period to 24th of May to 30th of May. I will only request hourly outputs uh, so that we can review selected results related to natural ventilation. I'll keep all other outputs in uh, all other options in these stats as it is and will run the simulation. As this is a simple model, the simulation won't take too much time to complete. So now the simulation has completed and I will review the results uh, for flat one on the first floor. At the top of the results graph, you have the temperatures, and you can see the temperature has a relatively flat line, in, indicating that it is being controlled. Here, the natural ventilation is working to maintain our set point of 23 degrees Celsius. Looking at the total fresh air graph at the bottom, you can see that infiltration provides a constant and uncontrolled air change rate of about 0.48 changes per hour and the fresh air natural ventilation rate increases above this during occupancy. The heat balance graph shows the correlation between ventilation rate and the associated heat removal. That is the cooling effect from natural ventilation. You may also notice the different profiles of solar gains and the external ventilation. This is because our as I mentioned earlier, our building is a student accommodation that is mainly occupied during the nighttime. 
and the NAT band is set only to operate during these occupied hours. So now we have seen the cooling effect from natural ventilation in our model using predefined airflow rates. We can now move on to part two and see how easily you can progress from an early stage model to a detailed stage for wind and buoyancy pressure driven natural ventilation modeling. Calculated natural ventilation simulations use data including wind and buoyancy driven pressures, opening sizes and operation and fabric infiltration details. It is often used to simulate buildings with features designed to increase natural ventilation rates such as atria and for uh, summer overheating calculations in naturally ventilated buildings. I will talk more about this later. After setting up and running a calculated natural ventilation simulation, this builder can produce results which indicate what the fresh air ventilation rates and internal temperatures are likely to be in each zone. The airflow rates through openings can then also be used to define boundary conditions for CFT analysis. I will now show you how to set up a calculated natural ventilation simulation. For detailed natural ventilation analysis, you can switch from scheduled to calculated uh, option here in the model options. And once you have set the required model option inputs, you should ensure that the correct weather file is loaded. And this will depend upon the analysis you are carrying on. For example, some analysis only needs to represent typical building operations. And here you may need to use only a typical meteorical year weather file. Whereas some other, such as say uh, TM59 analysis, would require you to use a design summer year one weather file. For this webinar, I will leave it as it is. If I now move on to the HVAC tab, you will immediately notice that unlike when using scheduled option, some of the options under natural ventilation header have a green background. This is because when calculated option is selected, the ventilation rates, as I mentioned earlier, are calculated using wind and buoyancy driven pressures, opening sizes and operation and fabric infiltration details, and not predefined airflow rates. The inputs with the uh, green background only affect heating and cooling design calculations and not calculated natural ventilation simulation. So these can be ignored here, but you must check them if you are running a design calculation. I will leave the template selected to radiator heating uh, boiler hot water system with natural ventilation. Now for calculated natural ventilation, you must define the opening areas and their operation controls. Here, uh, you can specify the total area of each window open to free airflow as a percentage of total area of the window. I will assume that 10% open uh, area applies to all the windows in the flats. You can make this change by navigating to individual blocks, zones, uh, facades, or openings and set the appropriate uh, opening percentage. If you prefer to use this approach, it is much easier if you disable the learning mode. Most people find the best way to set this is using the model grid view tool. This can significantly speed up your glazing data input. The model data grid view management dialog allows you to select which model data you want to view at building, zone, uh, surface, or opening level. For this webinar, I had already created a new layout, but you can create a new layout if you require your yeah, uh, copy and edit an existing one or import a new layout using the options here. You can find more details on this on our program help. So this page gives you uh, 
details about how you can create as well as edit and manage layouts. Now, I'm going to focus only on flags for this webinar. So I will uh, click on edit. And I will regroup uh, it based only on blocks. I can filter out the options here. Here I can use the shift key to uh, select multiple rows. And once multiple rows are selected, the bulk edit option becomes visible here. And here we have the percentage glazing area opens op openings option. And I will change this to 10 and press enter to apply. And so you can see with the bulk edit option that automatically apply to all the selected rows. You will also notice that uh, on the west and east, um, east windows, we have openings with smaller areas. I will select those using the control option. And I will change the opening area to 25%. And doing this, assuming that there are no security, noise, and privacy issues. Note that model data grid view tool can also be used to QA check your model as well. Here, if required, I can check whether the correct schedule has been loaded. And you can load uh, different data and uh, use the this tool to QA check your model. I will click on apply to apply the changes into the model. And if I navigate to uh, flat one on the first floor and to one of the walls and uh, an external window, you can see that the change has been applied. Here, the operation schedule can be used to control when and by how much each opening is able to open. This can be a bespoke schedule or simply full occupancy pattern. I will leave uh, the option selected to full occupancy. And you can use the same process to specify the operation details for internal windows, uh, roof, uh, skylights, doors, and vents. Going to the activity tab, here we had earlier set the natural ventilation temperature to 23 degrees Celsius, and I will leave it as it is. And on the construction tab, under the tightness header, again note that the constant infiltration rate have a green background, and thus is only used in heating and cooling design calculations. For calculated natural ventilation, infiltration is defined using the crack template. You should check that the crack template setting reflects the age and type of building. Most new buildings should be set at least to good. Now that I have entered all the necessary input data, we can proceed with the simulation. Now, before uh, starting in detailed simulation, you should always do a QA check and ensure that the model is working correctly. There are several additional outputs you could request for surfaces and openings that will help you QA check your model and ensure that the windows are opening correctly. So I will request some details for flat one. So if I go to flat one on the first floor and in the model, model options, the simulation tab, I will check the option here, which allows, uh, which is to allow custom outputs. And if I navigate to the miscellaneous tab and under simulation output options, I will select the store surface output under building surface and openings output, and also select the store opening and subsurface output. 
here you will notice that uh, airflow in and airflow out are selected. So we can use this to check out whether the windows are opening correctly or not. Now, calculated NATMAN simulations are often used to provide evidence that a building is unlikely to suffer significant summer overheating or otherwise. You can use the temperature distribution option here to generate temperature distribution curves showing hours at hours below and hours above each one degree Celsius interval in zone temperature during the simulation. Note that I'm only requesting this uh, for flat one, as this is a QA check. I will go to the building level and now run a simulation. I will change the description to detailed and we I'll, uh, I'll keep the same time period here and I will also request suborbital data so now note that uh, for calculated natman simulations it is recommended that you select at least six time steps as a minimum Uh, I will also select the simulation manager and then click OK to run the simulation. Now, simulation manager allows you to run and control multiple parallel simulation and uh, access previous result sets. It also allows you to continue working on design builder models when simulations are running. So as you can see, our simulation is warming up. I can close the simulation manager return to our model and make any relevant changes I want. And then I can run uh, another simulation or any number of simulations in parallel to the previous one. You can, uh, you can also run simulation to check compliance with different overheating and comfort standards. For example, uh, SIP CTM59 is a standard standardized approach uh, to predicting overheating risk for residential building designs. When this option is selected, Design Builder provides custom TM59 outputs for review in Results Viewer. To generate uh, TM52 reports, you can select the option here. You can also select other options for main standard and comfort. Uh, reports and metrics such as the FANGUP, TMV, and PPD, uh, ASHRAE standard 55, or SEN standard 15, uh, 251. If you want to know more about overheating compliance reports such as TM52 and uh, TM59, there are free resources on our program help. which can guide you through the process. We also have another uh, previous webinar, which, which can show you how the uh, EC Design Builder workflow is. And this webinar shows you how you can generate TM52 and 59 reports from your APC model. Uh, in a short period of time. And if you are looking for a starting point for structured learning on overheating assessment using TM52 and TM59 methodologies, then we will soon be releasing an on-demand training course to cover this. Now, back to Design Builder. If I click OK, the simulation will run uh, in the background uh, using Simulation Manager. Since I haven't made any changes, I will click on cancel. You can always open the simulation manager using the icon here. And here you can see that our simulation has finished. Uh, once the simulation has finished, we can either load this back into the design builder in interface to view the most commonly viewed standard outputs or to results viewer to view the thousands of outputs that are produced during the simulation. 
here I will load this results back to the same builder. If you want to know more about uh, simulation manager and uh, results viewer uh, on our tutorials page on our website, we have a tutorial specifically on simulation manager and results viewer. Now, as you can see, we have the, the results loaded back into the same filter interface. And if I go to plug into flat one on the first floor, you can see that the air temperature shown in blue has a relatively flat line showing that it is, uh, it is being controlled. The heat balance graph here uh, shows that shows the significant cooling effect we are uh, getting from natural ventilation or planes. Now, if I navigate to one of the uh, windows, you can see the airflow in and airflow out on the bottom graph. The airflow in is shown in blue, whereas the airflow out is shown in red. This can also be visualized uh, using the data visualization tab. So if I change the plot type to uh, opening airflow vectors and the period to say 28th of May and at 8 a.m. Here you can see the airflow in and airflow values here. And if I change the vector scale to uh, vector scale under the display option to say 40, you can also see the airflow in and airflow out represented using the vector arrows. Now, another result we had uh, requested was the temperature distribution data. So if I go to flat one and select uh, the option here in the info panel, that is show temperature distribution data. You can see that uh, the bottom graph, the, the temperatures during the simulation period falls between 21 and 26 degrees Celsius. This data can be uh, then can provide a useful overview of comfort in buildings over time. The results can be compared with benchmark comfort criteria. Uh, for example, uh, code may recommend benchmark some up peak temperatures and overheating criteria such as say uh, bedrooms in dwellings should have no more than one percentage of occupied hours over operating temperature of uh, say 26 degrees Celsius. So you can carry out the analysis and check these out. Now, uh, in this part we assess the potential of natural ventilation using wind and buoyancy driven natural ventilation modeling. Now we will move on to the third part of this webinar uh, where we will show you how you can use the results from the simulation to set up boundary conditions for a CFT analysis. And this allows you to zoom in on other, on the details of temperature and flow distribution within the space for a particular snapshot in the simulation. So if I go to uh, flat one again on the first floor and the CFT tab in the info panel, I'll open the CFT boundary conditions editor. Here you can see uh, the flow balance as well as the temperatures. The temperatures for the windows and walls are currently set to these default values and the Flow balance is currently set to zero. I can input temperature and boundary flow conditions for our uh, from our energy plus simulation using the import option here in the info panel. Uh, here you can select the time uh, time and the interval. So I will again select uh, 28th of May and 8 a.m. and click OK. This dialog box shows that 15 
data have been imported from our Energy Plus simulations. And here you can see that the flow, uh, flow in and flow out values have been updated. And if I go to the temperatures tab, here you can see that the temperature values have been updated. Note that in terms of CFD solution, we need to have continuity of mass flow. This is important to carry out CFD calculations. Here you can see that uh, the, there is a slight misbalance. So uh, because CFD calculations do not use infiltration flows, you may want to switch off infiltration treatment in the uh, construction model data tab when you are doing uh, these analysis. This will help ensure that the flow balances with little or no need for extra correction flows to be introduced to the CFD boundary conditions. So here you can correct the balance by selecting and opening and clicking the option here. I will click OK to confirm the edits. And if I navigate to one of the windows, you can see that the data have been updated. I will now run a, a CFT simulation. I will name it in the webinar CFT. I will leave all the uh, grid spacing, etc., to defaults. One of Design Builder's greatest strength is its fully integrated approach, meaning that you can set up a single model and run multiple different types of analysis from it. I will pause the simulation uh, before it converges so that we can look at some preliminary results. If I add a CFD slice here, you can see that we have some preliminary results showing up. And here you can see that uh, the temperature at the middle of the room is around 21 degrees Celsius. As you can see, it's uh, green in color. And here you can see that the cold air uh, coming in from outside as shown by the airflow vector. I could add another slice to this which would give a better uh, idea of what's going on in here. But because this is a NatMan study, I'm not going to explore further here, but this shows how easily you could use Energy Plus simulation results for your CFT calculations. If you would like to learn more about CFT modeling, uh, there are resources available on our program help. which could give you guidance to get started with CFD analysis and design builder. And if you are looking for a more structured uh, learning method, then, then our own on-demand training will meet your needs. And as you can see here, we have a, a specific section on linked energy plus and design builder CFD. So that finishes the third part. And so moving on to the moving on to the last part, we will show you how you can model mixed mode systems in Design Builder. You can model three types of mixed mode systems. A concurrent system is where a space has air conditioning plus natural ventilation openings that are openable at the same time. A zone system is where different zones with, within the building have different conditioning strategies. These concurrent and zone system types can be modeled simply by enabling natural ventilation with mechanical ventilation and or cooling systems in your model. The final type of mixed mode ventilation control is the change of a system which serves two main purposes. 
One, it prevents simultaneous snatch of ventilation and HVAC system cooling operation. And, and two, it allows you to test various ventilation strategies to optimize snatch of ventilation and heating or cooling loads. To model uh, changeover systems, where HVAC and natural ventilation systems cannot operate at the same time, you can use the mixed mode option under the natural ventilation header uh, here in the HVAC tab. Uh, mixed mode controls can be modeled using calculated O scheduled natural ventilation and simple O detail HVAC. For simplicity in this webinar, uh, I'll be using Design Builder's default options, which is scheduled natural ventilation and simple uh, HVAC. I will change the HVAC template to radiator heating, boiler, uh, hot water with mixed mode natural ventilation system. And when the template is loaded, you can see that the Mechanical ventilation is turned off, uh, whereas the cooling as well as natural ventilation and the mix mode option here has been turned on. Going to the activity tab, I'll keep the ventilation uh, minimum temperature control as 23 degrees Celsius. And here we have the heating set point as 20 and the cooling as 25 degrees Celsius. So, uh, when we run a simulation, the natural ventilation will turn on. Uh, when the uh, zone temperature goes above 23 degrees Celsius, and the cooling will only turn on uh, or switch over from natural ventilation when the zone temperature goes above 25 degrees Celsius. So if I run a simulation, I will give it as mix, mix mode, I will keep the same simulation periods and I will keep the time, uh, same time steps. I will turn off simulation manager because I want the results to load back into design builder interface. And since this is also a simple model, the simulation won't take too much time to, uh, to complete. Now that the simulation has completed, if I go to uh, flat one on the first floor and change the data under display option to old and the interval to sub hourly, I'll also change the data to just graph. Okay, here you can, on the heat balance graph here, you can see the different profiles of uh, zone sensible cooling and natural ventilation. And we change the days per page to one to zoom in to this uh, 30th of May. Uh, here you can see that uh, zone sensible cooling is working and here we have the uh, tem uh, zone temperature uh, about 25 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, the zone sensible cooling is working. And when the temperature moves below 25 degrees Celsius, it switches over from cooling to mechanical cooling to uh, external ventilation. So as you can see, we don't have simultaneous cooling or venting here, which as intended, is working uh, perfectly. So that finishes this part on modeling mixed mode systems. Before we move on to uh, move on and answer any questions you have, uh, uh, let me show you some useful learning resources. On Design Builders webinars page, you can find the recordings of all our earlier 
webinars. It covers a wide range of topics and uh, excellent resource, resources that will help you learn different modeling aspects and design builder. For example, the HVAC webinars shows how rapidly you can model energy plus HVAC systems in December and quickly and easily update your model as the design evolves. And our program help has explanations for all the design builder uh, settings and data items. And it also has a section on modeling guides and tutorials. This page brings together in one place all the various tutorials and modeling guides that are available in the program help arranged by sections. For example, if you wish to model ASHRAE 90.1 uh, and automated lead MEPC uh, report generation, the, here are the modeling gates for these. If you are new to Design Builder and want to get a feel for the software, these free short tutorials are an excellent resource to get you started with uh, Design Builder modeling. However, if you are looking for a starting point for structured learning of Design Builder, then our on-demand training uh, provides what you exactly need. So uh, that finishes the webinar and I will now hand over back to Dave. Okay, thanks Ranjith. Um, well done, quite a lot of ground to cover there. Um, so that hopefully provided you with a really good overview of some important NAPMAN modeling capabilities in Design Builder. And I think it clearly showed in real time, um, all of what Renji did was, was live there, uh, how seamlessly you can move from early stage modeling through to, to detailed using the, um, the different um, options in Design Builder. The concept of Design Builder, I'm sure many of you know, is you, you kind of start with nice, simple options and then you add detail to your model as your design um, progresses. So I think that was uh, that was shown very well there. That ends our um, the, the presentation on natural ventilation modelling. Um, please give us a minute or so now so we can review the questions that haven't yet been answered and prioritise uh, those, and we'll we'll start answering those imminently.